I'm a, I'm a child of the 80s and you know I grew up in little old New Zealand as you can tell by the thick Kiwi accent and you know our back back then you know the one thing my mum and dad would say to me was you know you you're bored well hop on your bike go down to the the local school and see who's down there playing you know go and play with them and you know in this world that that I think we're transitioning now into this world of rich technology environment the world that I I find myself in every day working with schools and educators from all over the world uh, I, I think we're, we're in a better position to harness the power of technology now than we ever have been before. And I think some of the panelists have touched on uh, one of the things that I always talk about uh, with schools in particular that I work with, which is, you know, we're educating our kids for their future, not our now and not, you know, our past. It's about what's going to come next. It's not even what's happening now. So, you know, let go of those predetermined ideals of what it was like for you as a kid or, or what it was like five years ago. And I think that it, it, we hear it all the time, but the most dangerous phrase in education is, you know, this is the way I've always done things. And moving now beyond that and pushing boundaries with technology and, you know, being here in a panel with, you know, pretty esteemed, amazing people, you know, you can see that this is a reality. And in our schools, uh, I think, you know, people get hung up on the curriculum that you teach or, you know, the country that you're in. The reality is, you know, I've taught across many, many different curriculums in many different environments. You know, it's all the same with different nuances and languages. You know, what I'm learning in mathematics in New Zealand, uh, the same strategy that my seven-year-old's learning here in Singapore in an American curriculum school. It's all about how and why and what we do with that in the real world, I think. I think back to, you know, in year three, when I was a year three teacher many years ago, you know, one of the topics was space. And at, at this stage, we're, you know, exploring the idea of inquiry. What is inquiry? What does it mean to ask questions about the world and, you know, find answers to those questions? And as we, we delved into that, one of the things was, you know, what do you want to learn here? You know, we, we know as teachers what we have to cover, what boxes we have to tick. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't meet the needs of and changing needs of our learners, then what's the point in doing it? And, you know, one of the, the questions that the kid asked was, you know, why are the suits, you know, certain shapes? So, you know, that's a question there. Uh, how do they withstand, you know, diff changes in gravity or changes in temperature? Um, you know, what are the science experiments that occur in space? All these questions that none of these we were going to cover as part of the curriculum. So what we did was, uh, you know, I use Twitter. I'm a fan of Twitter for connecting and engaging. And I say to the kids, you know, we're going to put this on Twitter together. And this is a public space. I'm going to share it here and we're going to talk about it. And so I shared it. And the next day, you know, time zones doing their wonderful thing. You know, we went to, to sleep in New Zealand and woke up the next day and we had 12 responses. And not only did within three days of these questions being asked, did we get to chat with uh, Clayton Anderson, I think his name is, uh, astronaut in the US. We, we had a, a live conversation with him back in the day when you know, we didn't have to jump through the hoops of going through NASA and, and finding the right way to connect to the right people. Uh, and we had a spacesuit design company come to us with a personalized answer to our question. Uh, and we, we connected with a, a kids camp in the US who were doing some, some space activities and it was relevant and it was real and, and it sort of comes back to me and I think, you know, where is that disconnect still today? You know, we think that in schools globally think that we can do STEM by dropping devices into a classroom or here you go, let's do STEM, here are 20 Raspberry Pis, you know, but We've, we miss the gap of what about educating the people? What about educating our teachers? What about educating our parents who have a huge disconnect of what it was like at school for them and what it's like now? So for me, the gap's not necessarily the technology context. Sometimes it is, but it's more in the, the learning side of things. How do we bring everyone together to learn, develop and grow so we can be successful in this, this thing that we call STEAM, which now is, should be, could be integrated into everything we do 
in a classroom.